Jeffrey Deaver is the number one international best-selling author of more than 30 novels, three collections of short stories, and a non-fiction law book. And he joins us this morning to talk about the latest called The Skin Collector. Good morning, Jeffrey. Good morning, Pete. Good to talk to you. Good to have you on the show with us. And uh, I am a big fan. I've read a number of the books. And, and you're responsible for me losing sleep here as I read The Skin I'm so, Collector. I'm so happy to hear that. Pete. That's <laughs> music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this is – how is this related to the Bone Collector? We have our same investigators, and uh, and I guess our our criminal here is inspired by the Bone Collector? Sure. I'll, I'll tell you how it goes back. I, I was once doing an interview a long time ago, and the, the presenter – this is over in England, and the presenter, the uh, anchor person, said uh, – pointed a finger at me and said, Mr. Deaver, what do you say to the charge that your books are manipulative? And I said, thank you, because I, I consider that – quite a compliment. I'm supposed to manipulate my readers. Well, each one of my books is, is a bit of a roller coaster. I have lots of plot twists and turns in it. But in the same way, I try to create twists and turns in the arc of the whole series. Now, there's been, um, I guess, about 11 books in the series featuring Lincoln Rhyme, who your listeners may remember from the, the movie, The Bone Collector, if they haven't read the book, uh, played by Denzel Washington. Well, when I wrote the first book in that series, The Bone Collector, I left open a plot twist intentionally, knowing that some really nefarious characters were going to come back eventually. <clears throat> and I planned to have them come back a little earlier than this, but one thing led to another. I had different book ideas. And finally, after 11 books, the characters, the bad guys from The Bone Collector, come back to haunt Lincoln Rhyme and Amelia Sachs. Wow. So when you plot the the storylines here, it seems that, like it's a long process. Oh yeah, yeah. I spend about eight months outlining my book, um, each one before I write it, and that's a full time job. Um, I'm standing in my office now, and I'm looking at my uh, a big uh, push pin board that has my new book on it, and I'm looking at uh, just a, a number of. Um, uh, posted notes. Um, I live in kind of a humid area. I'm down in North Carolina, so I have to use the, the pins. <laughs> if I if I write on the post-it notes alone, they might end up on the floor. I mean, Same here in the right. summertime. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. It's been, it's been lots of wonderful time up in your neck of the woods. Um, but yeah, I plan that out um, so that at the end of the day, the um, uh, outline of um, a typical novel is about a hundred and. 40, 150 pages, and I know where every element of the plot is going to go. I know who all the characters are when they leave the story, either walking off alive or sometimes in a gurney as the medical examiner wheels them off the uh, page. So I um, I like to be really buttoned up and, and organized about my uh, my writing. So you like to have it visually displayed in front of you? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's... Um, uh, you know, oddly enough, I'm, I'm a much more visual person than I am a, a, a verbal person, uh, curiously, because I, uh, you know, I, I write <laughs> fiction for sure. a living. Sure. But I'm, I'm, I'm very comfortable looking at the spatial relationships between the different plot lines. And I'll have um, oh, probably 300 of these uh, post-it notes. Um, where I, you know, I rearrange them. I move the uh, section forty-two down to section eighty-one, and move them back and forth until I'm pretty happy with the story. And then it becomes, then I write it down on a, um, uh, it's my computer. It's not an official outline like Roman numeral one and so forth. But I know mm-hmm. the whole chronology of the story, and uh, and then that's very helpful because. You know, I may not want to write the book from beginning to end. Where if I know the ending, I can write that first. Or, I, you know, I might have to write the beginning at uh, any time, the last thing I write. So uh, it's very easy for me to um, uh, approach a book that way. And I, I just frankly don't see, uh, and I have a lot of respect for people who sit down with a blank computer, a blank piece of paper, and out comes a beautiful story. I, I just don't have that skill. Hmm. Well, you definitely have skill. There's no doubt about that. We're talking to Jeffrey Deaver, the author of the new one is called The Skin Collector. And uh, tell me about Lincoln Rhyme. Does uh, d- does Lincoln reflect any parts of your personality? Uh, well, in a way, he, he does. And for your listeners who aren't familiar, I'll, I'll uh, tell you a little bit about him. Uh, when we met him in The uh, Bone Collector, uh, this goes back about 15 years, he had been the head of the New York City 
a crime scene unit, which you know we're all familiar with now because of uh, shows like CSI and so forth. Um, but he unfortunately had been injured badly at a crime scene he was searching and is uh, uh, paralyzed from the neck down. He's a quadriplegic. And when the, the bone collector opens, he's actually considering assisted suicide because he's, his life has changed so dramatically. But then uh, this criminal, the bone collector, shows up and uh, begins a, a mental chess match with Lincoln, taunting him and defying him to find this, this killer and stop him before a series of terrible events happens. And um, Lincoln realizes that all along, throughout his life, he really wasn't a physical person. He was kind of like Sherlock Holmes, and he uses his mind as his weapon. And so um, he decides against the uh, assisted suicide and gets back into crime solving as a uh, consultant. And I have to say, I, there's a little bit of me in there, <laughs> in there too. I'm not very athletic. Uh, I've tried a few sports and I'm pretty much a disaster at it. But I, uh, I you know, I, I'm not. I don't suffer from a disability like uh, Lincoln does. But I'm much more comfortable with my mind and using uh, that uh, sick and twisted imagination of mine to, to write books. So Lincoln and I do share that together. Now, after writing a novel with all these scenes and twists and all that, does does it leave you emotionally drained? Um, I'll tell you what leaves me emotionally drained, Peter, and that's a very, very good question. It isn't so much that some of the scenes are rather harrowing, because I keep most of the violence off the, the page. I leave a lot to the reader's imagination. Right, you do, yeah. But what is really difficult for me is the, the thought that I have to give my readers something enjoyable and something compelling and, and something that's better than the last book I did. And uh, so I'll give you an example. I'm writing uh, my next book, the one that will be out next year. And I woke up in the sweat uh, earlier this morning. I'm in an odd time zone. I just got back from book tour in Italy, so it was about 4 in the morning. I woke up all in a sweat because a scene I had written yesterday, I just knew it wasn't going to work. You know, you know, readers would have read it and thought, you know, this, this just doesn't ring true. And so um, before I gave you a call, I, I sat down and I'd hammered out an outline for a, that, that small section that I had to, had to change. And that, you know, that drives me crazy if I get something wrong, because readers, they, um, books are expensive nowadays, and they take a big commitment of time. And I want to make sure my readers kept their money's worth. Now, uh, Jeffrey Deaver's new book, The Skin Collector, uh, is about a, a deranged tattoo artist. So, do you have a tattoo? No, I don't. I'm because a coward, I was gonna... basically. You're what? <laughs> I'm a coward. Oh, basically. okay. I don't... You don't do needles like <laughs> so, Casey, huh? So that's my issue is that I said I've always been afraid of needles, so a tattoo was never really uh, an option for me. <laughs> but it's definitely out of the question now after hearing the synopsis <laughs> of this book. I don't want some yeah. deranged tattoo artist to be putting poison in my skin. Yeah, I'll, and, and just to uh, freak your uh, listeners out a little bit more, I'll explain what happens is that this, uh, this villain who is – uh, again, motivated in some way by the, the bone collector many years ago, uh, is a tattoo artist. But what he does is he, he waits in underground areas of New York, like passageways by uh, uh, restrooms and, and fancy restaurants and laundry rooms, and he grabs his victims and he, he tattoos them. But um, it, it, he doesn't use ink, he uses poison. And the point of this is to send a message um, a cryptic message to uh, Lincoln Rhyme and the, the city of New York. And, um, you know, ideally they'll be able to figure it out and stop him before he gets the next victim or whatever his ultimate plot is. And sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. There you go. Jeffrey, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, is it jeffreydeaver.com is your website? That's it, exactly. And your listeners can find far more uh, about me than they ever need to know. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you'll come back when the new one's out next year. Would love to talk to you again. Right. Take care of both of you now. Thank you. If the night turned cold and the stars looked down And you'd hug yourself on the cold, cold ground You'd wake the morning in a stranger's corpse But no one would you see You'd ask yourself who'd watch for me only friend, who could it be? It's hard to say it, I hate to say it, but it's probably me.